Something cool may be coming to your TV soon. Welcome to the Drunk Linux User. I'm Len. I am the Drunk Linux User. And quick update, I've now had three votes for keeping the name Drunk Linux User and a big goose egg for getting rid of it. So, I think we may be staying with Drunk Linux User. If you like what you're seeing in these videos, just mash all the buttons on YouTube if you don't mind. I'd appreciate it. Comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think you might be able to suggest that can make this a little bit better. And please don't talk to me about the camera. I already know. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this new thing that's coming out by KDE for your TV. Instead of using perhaps the baked-in smart TV features, if you're interested in something a little bit different and more privacy oriented, KDE Plasma is coming out with their big screen. And it's supposed to have like a 10 foot UI. So this thing is going to, you know, you're going to be able to see this easily from across the room. Pretty interesting. Um, I already mentioned the 10 foot. KDE developers use KDE technologies and technologies related therein to build out this large screen experience, including Plasma, QT, KWIN, Wayland, Pulse Audio. Interesting choice considering how things are going to pipe wire, but, and the very promising Kirigami UI framework. There's even built in support for voice control using the Mycroft AI Assistant. Just don't ask it to play Mr. Bean. If you go to this page, click on the link for YouTube to watch this. It's pretty funny. If you want to try it out, they have an array of Linux ARM images with Plasma Big Screen. And also, keep in mind, this is in development, so it's not going to replace maybe Roku or something like that. So if you want to try it, just come on over to their GitLab page, and you can see that there's several areas right here that could maybe use some help. Now... I know this may sound off topic, but it's right on board with what I'm trying to talk about today. And that is, if you offer to beta or offer suggestions for software that's in development, then this is a great quote, lead, follow, or get out of the way. If you're going to present information to a developer, present it in a way that makes it sound as a benefit, not as your software sucks. All right. I know a lot of people get very, very intently passionate about what they want to see out of their software. Rule of thumb, if the developer and your ways are not following that same path and you do not agree on most anything, get out of the way. Or if you don't necessarily care about the the vision but you want to do the work then follow okay but if you're a project leader and you're working with a developer maybe you are the developer then lead these people but do this in a way that you can say that you've done something today that your future self will thank you for you don't want to burn any bridges and this is one of those deals where if, if, if you're just butting heads and things are not working out between everybody, maybe it's time to move away. But be gracious about it. Say, hey, I'm sorry. Um, I really think X, Y, and Z should be A, B, and C. I appreciate the, um, the offer to, to help out, but I, I'm just going to have to leave. If you're a beta tester... If you're working for an independent, you're probably not getting paid until after something's done. And even then, if it's a free open source and there's no donations coming through, you're probably not going to get paid anyway. But that developer could move on to bigger and better things and remember that, hey, this guy was really good at this while I was working on that. And I've seen this happen and people get drawn into even bigger and better projects. Happened to me a couple of times and I appreciate it. Never burned a bridge and wish I was still in contact with some of those people, honestly, because that was an amazing experience. Beta testing is a unique scenario. 
And what will happen with large corporations is they will give you maybe a plan to follow. They want you to test this, 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 and this. Now, how they do it is is completely up to them. They're going to want some information, uh, maybe your system. Just don't give me your social security number, driver's license, and all that stuff. That's that's irrelevant. But when you're working with them, follow their guidelines. If you have suggestions, make the suggestion. Don't be confrontational about anything. This is all in in a in an attempt to try to make things as easy and fluid and as comfortable as possible so that your team is working as fluidly as possible and being creative at the same time. Now I'm not really directing this more towards the developers. I'm I'm definitely talking about people who for example, even on existing software, you can sit there and every time you use something it's like oh this just doesn't work the way i like it because it doesn't make sense it's illogical it's not practical whatever instead of going on the boards and trashing this sucks you know this is this this is horrible i've never worked with a computer system or a or a piece of programming that, that's this flaky or or so back asswards or whatever get in touch with the developer if you can directly if you if they don't have something on their website, GitHub, GitLab page, to get in touch with them one on one, ask them to send you maybe a direct message or something so that you can just you know how how can I reach you about X Y and Z? If that doesn't work, okay, well maybe politely put it up on the on the board somewhere so that they can see that you have an interest. Hey, I noticed this. Just don't say, you know, man, this is the worst piece of software I've ever used. Don't do that. You're, you're not going to get any loving from that developer or that company whatsoever. You may have somebody reach back and say, what is it you don't like? Again, if you're going to be confrontational about it, it's going nowhere. So there's very many different ways of of going through a development process, the developer, the programmer, the company, they'll let you know what to do. You are either going to follow if you're a beta tester or you're going to leave and just say, hey, thanks for the opportunity, but this isn't for me. I can't do or I can't even do this. That's fair. They'll respect that. And again, maybe later on down the road, if things are progressing and you see an area where there could be improvement, put it in. All right. There's so much conflict and contradiction and contrary people right now going around making life hard for everybody. It's tough enough. I understand that. But if you want to be a positive influence, remember, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Because you might be saving your own bacon by doing something really good for a developer, bringing up something that they had never even considered. And it will help you, maybe in the next iteration of that software, to be able to be more productive, more creative, or whatever. So, I know for a lot of people that makes a lot of sense. But there are also people new to the game, and there are also people who have never even had that kind of interaction before when it comes to companies and developers. Developers, especially the FOSS developers, the free open source software community, they may be doing this for many different reasons. They could be trying to build up a portfolio. They may be trying to do something for their, for, uh, their classwork to be able to graduate. It could be a labor of love. Maybe they're looking to sell this later on down the line to a big corporation. You have no idea what those, what the reasoning is behind making this. And sometimes people just make this out of good, out of the out of the goodness of their heart. So there are so many different factors on why this happens. I know I'm rambling on about this, but I do think it's important. If you don't like something, ask if you can help. If you don't like it at all find something else. It's, it's really that simple. So let's leave this with our words of wisdom. Don't drive drunk. 
Don't drink and drive. Don't go to eBay, Amazon, or use MS Edge shopping all buzzed up thinking you're going to buy the latest, greatest, and coolest stuff because you're probably not. And in the meantime, bottoms up and later, dudes.